Hello, this is Tony Hall from Lollabond Animal Nutrition, and I'm the Dairy Tech Support Specialist with Lollabond here in the Northeast. And at today's presentation, we've been looking at neutral detergent fibre. A neutral detergent fibre we call MDF, and it gives us a measure of the functional fibre on the forages that we feed to our dairy cows. It's really important that we understand MDF or neutral detergent fibre as it's the basis of the farm grown forages that lead to the greatest economy and the highest milk production um, in our dairy herds. We look at NDF uh, two or three different ways. We look at it in terms of the digestible amount of NDF over a period of time, also the rate, how fast that takes place, and also uh, a, new, a, new, a new technique, a new concept called UNDF or undigestible NDF, which you can look at as really like the ballast or the fill. So once we understand those areas of neutral detergent fibre or NDF, what we're actually understanding is how digestible that forage is on the farm, how quickly that digestion might take place, and what the limitations to appetite limits or intakes might be. So we're going to use laboratory analysis to help us understand that, and some of the information we get now on a regular basis from our laboratories is based on what's called NIRS, or Near Infrared spectroscopy and that near-infrared spectroscopy allows us to get quick answers on the numbers that we need in a timely fashion on the farm but very economically so that the farmer doesn't have to pay too much money for the analysis. This is important because farms will want to analyse their forages on a regular basis and make the necessary tweaks in ration formulation over a period of time. So what we look at here is neutral detergent fibre, the speed, the amount, the ballast. We could tweak this on some large farms every two or three weeks. Once we've got that understanding, we can then set out a game plan to maximise the amount of forage in the dairy cow's ration, both for the milking cow um, and the dry cows as well. And once we've, once we've understood where we need to go on the basis of that analysis, we can start to supplement and complement with the grain or concentrate feeds. And the whole idea of getting this competent analysis on, on a regular basis is to allow us to understand those NDF fractions, and then when we understand those NDF fractions, um, we can make an economic ration for the most amount of milk and milk component yield, but also, very importantly, maintain rumen health, okay, so there's no real health problems with our dairy cows. So that ends up being a, an ideal combination um, for the dairy farmer. Now, there are circumstances on all our clients' farms where the weather, doesn't always allow the client to harvest the material that they might ideally like to get the best out of their dairy cows in the most economic fashion. So that's where our NDF analysis allows us to understand that particular scenario. It may mean that we need to feed more grain, but it could be there are other solutions that we can think about. More and more now, consultants and dairy farmers are turning to a DFM, direct fed microbial type technologies to help improve NDF digestibility either in the forage or the whole ration. One example of those might be uh, an active dry yeast called Saccharomyces cerevisiae um, 1077 which has a very good track record in terms of managing subacute rumen acidosis or SARA as the acronym is known in the industry and that alone will help improve the NDF digestibility in the rations being fed to these dairy cows. The other unknown fact I think about uh, the, the 1077 active dry yeast is it also is very good at promoting NDF digestibility under non sera conditions or where the cows are receiving a ration that doesn't get the digestion into problems. So that helps both the consultant and the dairy farmer manage their ration to the, to the best ability for their dairy cows and uh, what they see is, is an increase in milk yield or milk component yield uh, which is good for the bottom line on the dairy farm. So that's, that, that's one approach we can take in terms of improving NDF digestibility. Another one that we see out in the field is actually treating the forage um, with an inoculant. An inoculant is a treatment we're going to put on the chopped material as it comes in from the field and gets packed in the, the, the silo or the bunk or the bag or the tower. And, and certainly inoculants are well known, uh, have a, um, a track record, a published track record of improving NDF digestibility. One in this case that I'm familiar with would be Lactobacillus butneri 4788. Not only does butneri 4788 improve the aerobic stability of the forages that we're working with by negating the effects of uh, wild yeast 
which in themselves have a, 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 dra a dramatic effect on reducing digestibility, um, the, the inoculant itself will secrete uh, enzymes which are capable of digesting uh, the fibres in corn silage and wheat silage, and there's very good published research on this material. So overall, to conclude, where we are is we're understanding NDF in a lot more detail. It's come a long way since the early days when it was first um, brought to us by uh, the great professor Peter Van Soest. And so now we know more about NDF in terms of the rate of digestion, the amount of digestion, and the amount of UNDF that's contained within there. So now we can both complement and supplement our forage base to make sure we both optimise rumen health and maximise milk yields. There are occasions where we're going to need to use microbial technology, and we've talked about some of the strain-specific ones, uh, with things like an active dry yeast, which will help massage the rumen and maintain rumen health and promote overall ration digestibility. And there are also strain-specific inoculants out there uh, that will allow us to improve the digestibility of the forage before it's even put inside the bunk. So if, if, we, if we take these uh, technologies together as a whole and we cut our crops at the, at the right growth stage, uh, we've got a great game plan now here for maximising milk component yield um, with inside the appetite limit of the dairy cow and really optimising our dairy farm clients' profits.